If you're looking to make money in sports cards and succeed financially overall in life, listen up. No one has helped more Americans get out of debt and achieve financial independence than financial guru Dave Ramsey. This guy has gone from bankrupt to being worth over $50 million and mostly from his business helping others succeed financially. In this video, you'll learn how you can apply some of Dave Ramsey's most proven, practical, and powerful teachings and philosophies to build a sustainable sports card investing business that will last as long as you wish. Welcome back. Now let's get to work. First things first, I am proud to say that I am certified under Dave Ramsey's financial coaching program, and I've been using these strategies and mindsets and philosophies to stay out of debt myself and save over $100,000 up in spite of just having a $50,000 a year career. So it's very important what you do with your money, a lot more than how much money you make. Now that's great news because if you apply these principles to sports card investing or real estate or stocks, you'll be a lot wealthier than someone that uh, has a lot of money coming in but does not treat it properly. Here's a disclaimer. I'm gonna go over how I believe Dave Ramsey would invest in sports cards based on his teachings with other uh, investment vehicles like the stock market. But it's not like I called him up and we did not talk about sports cards. This is just an interpretation that I'm carrying over. The first thing I believe he would say is have your emergency fund in place. Three to six months of your backup, your rainy day fund. Make sure that if your car breaks down, if you lose your job, if there's a family emergency, you would be okay. You wouldn't be stuck with all these basketball cards, but a broken down car at the side of the highway with no way of getting it fixed. The second thing Dave Ramsey would say is make sure you're out of debt before investing in cards. And that's because debt is just a burden. Debt is guaranteed. You bought a dinner a year ago and now it's on your credit card and you need to pay that off every month. That's a guarantee. An investment carries risk. That means I plan on this card going up threefold or fivefold or whatever percent, but it doesn't always happen that way. So it's a lot better to clear off the debt first before piling up uh, investments in sports cards. And remember, if you're buying sports cards on credit cards, you're paying 16 to 20% interest if that's not getting paid off in its entirety at the end of the month. You know, I can't help but think of all the kids here in the US that got college degrees in the last 10 years that paid 50,000, 80,000, 100, 150,000 dollars for these degrees without scholarships. And now they have a $40,000 a year job or they've been furloughed from the coronavirus and they just have ridiculous tuition debt that they, they can't get out of. Now, in hindsight, they were like, hey, you know what? When I was 18, I thought this was a good investment. I'm going to get this mass comm degree or this marketing degree and I'm going to make great money and I'm going to be able to pay this off. But remember, that debt sticks to you, especially college tuition. So. When you're debt free, you can invest, but for the time being, you wanna focus on getting out of the debt before risking putting yourself in an even deeper of a hole. Thirdly is to have your other investments going as well. Sports cards are not my only investment. I invest heavily in the stock market. I'm saving up for real estate as well. And this is a great side business. I love it. It's, I'm passionate about it. I see myself as more of a sports card shop owner than an investor. But the bottom line is sports cards are, at the end of the day, a little piece of artwork, a little piece of paper. It's not something that people rely on. So you got to diversify not only in cards, but in all sorts of investments as well. Now, assuming I could call up Dave Ramsey and we could have a conversation about sports cards and I could convince him, successfully convince him that sports cards is a great investment vehicle, he would probably say, okay, if you're gonna invest in sports cards, this is how I would divide my investments to make sure I am safe and secure and sustainable in the long run. The first category Dave recommends to put your money in is growth and income in the stock market. So if we translated that over to sports cards, that would be the GOATs, the Hall of Famers. That would be Jordan and Griffey and, and uh, you know Will Chamberlain and some of those guys, Larry Bird. Very stable, very secure. It's an anchor. It's not going to be amazing returns, but you know that long term it's going to go up in money. And in the stock market, you could think of that as like IBM or Apple or Google or, or just some of these companies. They've been around for a long time. They have a lot of resources, a lot of success, and you're going to pay a lot of money for these stocks or for these cards. But you know that 
they're secure, they're safe, and they will trickle up in value. The second category would be growth, and these would be companies with a proven track record, but not as stable, not as much of a lock as the growth and in income. So it'd be the next tier down of companies that might have ebbs and flows throughout the year or throughout the decade, but you believe that they're stable enough to always overcome any lulls and, and be on the rise regardless. So for players, I'm thinking Anthony Davis, Damian Lillard, guys that are almost in the Hall of Fame talks like they would be hall of famers or a couple more years they would be but they still have room to grow so it's a bit riskier uh, a horrible injury could derail their whole career and their legacy is not yet locked but if that doesn't happen there's a good chance that you will be investing in a future hall of famer without paying those absurd prices yet the third category is aggressive growth, and I think of this as the penny stocks, as the startups, the very sexy, flashy, new rookies in the league, the Zions, the guys that they show a lot of potential, a lot of hope, but the resume is very limited. And in, uh, in the stock market, these could be the tech companies, you know, the next apps that could change the world. And if you invest in the next Uber or the next Lyft or whatever, the next Postmates, you could see a 100x or a 1,000x return. Just like if you bought Tom Brady's rookie card, you know, bought 100 of those back in 2000 or 2001, that would be amazing. But we also know that the likelihood of these stocks or these players succeeding is very low. One word of caution with aggressive growth players such as Zion or some other guys that have a very short resume is that sometimes hype overvalues the player, as in they would be amazing investments. However, because so many people are excited about them being new, the value of their cards go through the roof before they've even earned that type of reputation or those types of prices. So whether it's in the stock market or in sports card investing, make sure that if you're paying for penny stocks of players that could break out, you're paying pennies, not hundreds and hundreds of dollars. The last category is international. And in the stock market, that means investing in funds that are in other countries to hedge against risk if the US economy tanks, which right now it's kind of tanking, but if the US does bad and you have stocks in Brazil or you have investments in Europe, then at least you'll be okay because you're diversified. Here in the sports card investing market, I would say that's equivalent to investing in different sports. Because as we see right now, as I record this, the NBA playoffs are set to resume, but there's a certain protest of, of players like Kyrie and Dwight saying, I don't want uh, to come back, or maybe we shouldn't come back. We have the MLB baseball that could be canceled this year because they can't get their, um, their negotiations down. So if you're all into baseball and we don't have a baseball season, you're gonna be on the sideline for a long time and those prices may dip really low while all the other sports pick up. So I would always say whatever sport you're investing primarily in, at least have a second sport to rely on in case something major happens such as negotiations falling through or, or a virus or something where one sport just shuts down or just does not succeed the way you expect it to. The amount of capital you allocate to each is up to the type of investor you are and your risk tolerance. For me, I'm doing 50% basketball, 30% football, 15% hockey, and maybe 5% in baseball. 80% of my investments are proven guys, uh, Tom Brady, Kobe Bryant, Damian Lillard, Anthony Davis, Kawhi Leonard, guys that I just know are good, but there's still room to grow. But the other 20% are the Jared Stidhams and the Chris Godwins, the guys that, you know, they could have one serious injury and just be done. They could underperform and their cards could tank. But for 20% of my investments to be on those higher risk, higher reward players, I'm very comfortable with because 80% of my investments are secure locks. Now it's up to you to find the right strategy that works for you, but whatever it is, please be responsible because the goal is for us to enjoy this hobby and to make some money and do this for a long time, not just for a couple months or a couple of years until we get our cars repossessed because we kept breaking boxes instead of uh, paying off our debt. So please be responsible, pound the like if you found some value in this video and make sure to download my guide with 30 advanced investor tips for beginners. The link will be in the video description. All right, see you in the next video.